Well, my name is Kevin Pang. I am a director here at Lux Research, and we are tremendously pleased to have Dr. Mahmoud Khan from PepsiCo to join us here today. Um, I thought maybe uh, to start us off, Dr. Khan, maybe you could uh, uh, describe your, your role and your mission at, at PepsiCo. So I have, um, like many executives, uh, a number of functions. The most important is I'm in charge of innovation for the company. I head up R&D with all of the usual functions within R&D, like safety, regulatory, product development, et cetera. But also, I'm fortunate also to be able to have the responsibility for what we think, call our sustainability agenda, which mm. means everything from packaging, water, agriculture, environment, and how strategically we're thinking about our future as an operating business, and of course, the broader ecosystem that we work in. Right, okay. Well, it, maybe you could describe for, um uh, for the people watching this video, uh, what, do you, what do you see as the, the, the top three challenges for PepsiCo uh, from both a near-term and maybe a longer-term perspective? Look, probably the greatest challenges for any large company uh, that's operating today, I would coin around one word. It's scarcity. Mm. There's going to be increasingly scarcity of natural resources, and if you're in the food and beverage industry, in particular water, agricultural produce, energy sources. There's going to be scarcity of the right talent because there's greater competition mm. for talent. Look at the number of graduates in science, technology, and engineering. We all talk about STEM, but 50% of all STEM graduates working in industry are over the age of 50. Really? So within a decade, half of them are gonna retire. Wow. What are we gonna do to fill that pipeline of talent? That's a huge challenge. Right. Then we have, on top of that, financial constraints. Our growth is occurring in developing and emerging markets. Those are countries and ecosystems where they're used to working with very different financial resources. Mm -hmm. Consumers challenge in different ways. And we're having to learn and adapt and innovate, not for a developed market or even just one country, right. but a globe with a very diverse population. Those are some of the major challenges that we have to be thinking about. Okay, and let's, let's flip the coin. Uh, tell me what you see are the most exciting opportunities, both for PepsiCo and for the CPG industry as a whole. Well, probably the most exciting is in the food and beverage industry, we have seven billion people on the planet today. The best estimates are somewhere around nine to 10 right. billion by 2050. It's two billion more consumers, 45% more demand for foods and beverages. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of an industry that is better poised for growth right. if for no other reason than consumer growth. The question is, will we be set up to be able to meet that demand? Great. Um, so tell me then about innovation. So how do you plan to stimulate that innovation and to sustain it within PepsiCo? So I think of innovation as several steps. The first and the most important is understand your consumer. Mm -hmm. Now, again, as we discussed earlier, the consumer historically we sort of looked at as a uniform consumer. That's not the case anymore. Hmm. Consumer from India versus China right. versus Latin America versus North America and even within America, hmm. a Hispanic consumer from the Southwest is different from a consumer in the right. Northeast. Okay. And so first is understand the consumer and their needs. The second, it, where it's critical is the ideation. Okay. How do you solve this consumer's need? That doesn't subject itself to a process well. I think sometimes as managers and executives, mm. we think we can just put a process over it. Ideation does not happen in a systematic, linear fashion. Right. And an organization needs to be able to capture these ideas, identify those that are going to be highly successful, and be willing to experiment and take risk. Right. Once you've actually identified and taken these ideas forward, <clears throat> and that's where a leader comes in, because you can back those ideas, you can put resources behind those ideas. Then you can have discipline in the process of how to develop that idea right. ultimately to execution. So sometimes we try mm -hmm. and put a process through everything. Right. right. If you try and put a process to ideation, you kill it. <laughs> okay. Well, it, it, PepsiCo is renowned for uh, its marketing prowess, uh, its product portfolio, but as somebody who has a medical background as well as a pharmaceutical background, how do you um, take the parts of the organization, the R&D part, the marketing part, the business units, and actually innovate? Well, the key to innovation for a person like myself and given my background 
is you've got to surround yourself by some really smart people. I came into this industry not knowing very much at all about the food and beverage industry. Yeah, I'm a consumer. Right. Yeah, I've studied nutrition. But that is an understanding of this industry. Mm -hmm. Understanding the logistics, the scale, the supply chain, all of those things which are critical success. You, f you have to surround yourself by these key leaders. But mm -hmm. you also have to have the courage to bring talent and skills from outside this industry right. into the company. Right. And one of the first things that I said about doing when I came to the company was how do I mix and create the balance of traditional knowledge of the industry with new ideation. So right. I recruited people from the life sciences industry, from the animal sciences industry, from beauty care industry, hmm. from uh, material science industry, computational biology modelers who came in with new ideas from hmm. other industries, brought right. them in, and now you create a, a great ecosystem where this ideation flourishes right. But then you also bring the discipline. Oh, okay. So this idea of bringing in external ideas and people is really exciting. But uh, what are the processes that you need to put in place? I mean, we did talk a little bit about processes, but what are what are the leadership that's required to actually get the yeah. synergy and the interdigitation? So it's a great question. Um, you know, when you when you're bringing in powerful, talented people from different disciplines, and you're mixing them with existing incumbent. Uh, people who have a lot of institutional mm -hmm. knowledge, which is critical. You can't just randomly let this come together. I mean, right. as akin to Brownian motion, right. it too will mix up. You actually have to be clear on what are the roles and responsibilities and when do you leverage institutional knowledge so it's not mm -hmm. lost. You know, you don't want to be reinventing the wheel. At the same time, when do you challenge that norm? Okay? Right. And how right. do you bring, I'll give you an example. We um, have, as a snacks company have been frying potato chips for decades right mm -hmm. more than almost a century wow. okay so we have a lot of knowledge around that however we've never really challenged ourselves until recently said you know is this the best way of doing this what did we do we took a group of computer modeling engineers who actually don't know anything about frying mm. but they're experts at modeling heat and flow curves. Oh, okay. So you ta have them take a look at this, this is exactly what, what I asked the team to do. Take a look at this. And they came from the petrochemical industry. They understand mm -hmm. heat transfer in ways the food industry doesn't think about right. it. Optimization, you know what? They looked and said, oh, I think we can make this at least 10% more efficient. Yeah. Oh, okay. How do you know that? Well, we <clears throat> modeled it. Now, the historical engineers were, well, what do you mean you can right. make it 10%? Have you ever fried a potato chip? No. <laughs> <laughs> but that doesn't matter because that's the sort of mindset, right? right, right. And then you go about proving it in physical uh, form and actually it turns out that you can make it more than 10% efficient. Oh. And we not only took that idea, we're actually now building a full-scale line in China which will be the first model hmm. of that version which is optimized to give you 10% efficiency. Now, a machine that costs 30, 40 million dollars right. and you make it 10% more efficient to run, the return on invested capital suddenly starts to look even more attractive. Yeah. Right, right, okay. right, right. Well, um, so one of the things we had talked about was uh, uh, in terms of the customers. And uh, so relative to the innovations, like ideas like that, uh, maybe you could talk a little bit more about uh, the consumer because many of our, our clients are chemical companies and basic material companies that feed materials to companies like PepsiCo. And a lot of them are asking us questions about, well, what does the consumer of the future look like? What, how, do, how, how do we think about uh, consumers? Uh, so we can better understand our customer, which might be PepsiCo. So one way I, I would think about the consumer of the future is, I start thinking of the letter C. Okay. They're gonna be very connected. Hmm. They're going to be living in more and more cities. Right. They are going to want to have the experience of the consumer product that they're going to be very critical to them. So now think of this globally connected consumer, increasingly in an urban environment, which means limited in space, mm. limited in transportation. When you live in a city of 15, 20 million people with all those traffic jams, you don't build mega stores. Right, right. And so all of the things that many consumer companies have historically looked at distribution systems, large manufacturing plants, consumers mm. that you advertise through traditional media. Right. All of that's going to change. Mm. And we're already seeing it. We're experiencing it. Mobile devices, 
one form of marketing being right. transferred to the consumer is now more and more empowered. Right. That's right. the other C. It's consumer power as opposed to the brand power alone. You're having to share right. that. What is, the, what is the relevance of brand in that ecosystem? What is innovation, innovation in an open system where the whole environment mm -hmm. is? So that consumer is going to create pull and right. demands in, which, in ways we never do. You have an issue with a brand in one part of the world, it's a problem across right. the world. On the other hand, you have a great idea in one part of the world, right. it All rapidly magic. moves. And we are able to now start to think about us everything from that ideation, mm -hmm. I give you examples of that, of how, how to do that differently, all the way through to production, through to consumer marketing, and ultimately even retail. All of that's changing. Mm. Consumer is driving that. Right. So how, how do you actually adapt the, the organization to s stay a pace or maybe even, well, is it, is it a question of staying uh, ahead of, uh, of the consumer or actually being very close behind them? You gotta be a part of, so let's talk about a real example. We were the first company to do this. We, we came up with the idea in our UK business originally where we said, you know, we create flavors of our snacks mm -hmm. in our kitchens, take them into our labs, create the product, manufacture and sell it. And we tell you, here's your, you know, in the UK, cheese and onion here, uh, it may be, a, you know, whatever your favorite flavor is. We said, why don't we ask the consumer? And so we called it do as a flavor. We opened it up mm -hmm. because of the social media, right. we had millions of people feeding us their ideas. Oh. Okay? Here's the snack <clears throat> that I like. Here was the challenge. As all these ideas came up, huge amounts of data over just a few weeks, right. we had to then filter those, prioritize those, and then in real time in parallel, be creating prototypes of those flavors so that we could actually launch right. in the same season. In the same season? Wow. Okay. All right? Yep. So from ideation through literally millions of ideas within weeks to be able to execute and put a product on the market. R&D and marketing has right. never had to work like that. Wow. We are doing that and it was so successful. We did it in the UK, then we brought it to the US, we've taken it to Eastern Europe, we're taking it across the world. The consumer's telling us the flavor to launch. So again, along the lines of uh, perhaps doing uh, some of our uh, other clients a favor, uh, if you had your wish, uh, what what would you want from your suppliers and your partners to help you uh, innovate to the consumer? I'd say we're looking for solutions that are going to be global solutions. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to create this environment of scale that's leveraged, but customizable on the other end. While that sounds like a conflict, it isn't. Mm -hmm. And we've been working increasingly to that. We also have to think about the inputs to our products and our uh, you know, ingredients. Increasingly, we're going to have to think about sustainability. Mm. A key part of my job is to think about, is this the optimal solution just for the consumer? Right. Is it the optimal solution for the environment? Is it the optimal solution for one supply mm. chain? Or what is the optimization of all of these? And you might end up actually in a different place right. if you try and optimize to all of them or as many of them as possible mm. versus just one. Historically, we optimize for one variable right. or right. one right. stakeholder. That is not possible anymore. When you are manufacturing a food and you're relying on aquifer water to mm -hmm. help you with the processing and those aquifers are getting depleted right. and you're competing with the local agriculture, you're going to have to rethink. Right, right. Well, this has been truly exciting and I wanted to thank you, Dr. Khan, for joining it's us a pleasure. today. Thank you. Thank you.